Hello everyone, it's Kay. So this is a part 3 of a process matter series. So this is the end of this uh, process matter series. And yeah, I hope you uh, like uh, this video as well. So the topic is about impatience. Impatience will not make things happen. And this is one of the proverbs that I like really. And every time I take trades or every time I look at the market, this word is actually in my heart. So, and that's why I decided to share this word so that you can uh, you can uh, also learn of uh, of the way I look at the market in terms of mindset. So, if you liked today's live already, please press a good button. And if you haven't su subscribed yet, please do so that um, uh, you can learn from my YouTube channel every day. So every day I do these live streams, but today this, and today, yesterday and the day before yesterday has been recording videos because I'm, um, I'm outside of Tokyo, but I decided to record these videos because at least um, you can learn something from my YouTube channel every day. So let's talk about the impatience, which is quite interesting and very important topic for any traders. So before starting, as a disclaimer, this knowledge is based on my experience. So when you take trades, please do with your risk. So this word, impatience will not make things happen, is actually said by this uh, Takamori Saigo. And um, yeah, he says this, he says, impatience will not make things happen, but patience will make things happen. So he talks about the importance of the patience. So just a little bit touch of this um, Saigo, Mr. Ta Saigo Takamori. Um, if you can Google it, uh, you can find all this information. Uh, basically, he was actually born in 18, mid 18s, and uh, he is considered to be uh, the, inf the most influential samurai in Japanese history and one of the three great nobles who led the Meiji Restoration. So he's basically considered to be a last samurai. You know, I, I if, you, if you've seen the video, uh, Last Samurai, that's actually him. He's one of the last samurais in, this, uh, in these ages. So, and he says this, he says, uh, impatience will not make things happen, but patience will make things happen. So, you know, um, it's usually said that patience is the key. We have to be patient to the market. We have to be patient until we see a decent setup. But what does really patience mean? I think the definition of patience is slightly different among traders. And let me tell you about the definition of patience uh, for me. For me, the patience in trading is that the um, it is the attitude toward the market to to wait until we see a we create a scenario we see the scenario to the future that's what i mean by patience so and also in other words patience for me does not mean that wait for the signals it's not the patient uh, it's not patient to look for the gold cross, dead cross. It's not the patient, patience to look for, to wait for these, uh, you know, Sanyaku signals or Chikospan breakout or Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, gold cross, dead cross. It's not the patience. What I mean by patience is wait until you can create these trading scenarios. So what that means is that the uh, if uh, if I can pull up this uh, real chart examples, um, let's take a look at this uh, Euro GBP, and this is a daily chart. So Euro GBP, uh, this is ranging uh, Kumo flat and Kijun Sen flat right now. So it's been ranging right now. So in this case, the price can go up 
or the price can go down and we didn't know which way it's going so um, usually it said that the uh, if the price breaks the Kumo downwards then this is going to be a one of the most significant signals to take a sell it is said that usually but um, actually that's not the case that's not true um, I won't look for sell chance here after the Kumo breakout even if this is a decent Sanyaku Gakuten signal I won't take a sell because um, we never know if the market continue to go up, continue to go down this way or not. Um, let me give you some other good examples. Um, let's say, um, hold on. Let's see. Let me look for some other good setup. Or oh, maybe this one is the good one. Or hold on. Let me see. Let me take the daily. And uh, oh yeah, I think this is a good example here. So. If you look at this daily chart and if you can come come uh, go back to a uh, couple of candles before like when you see this day when you see market this day then what would you think is a question so there was a tenkan sen kijun sen dead cross and chikou span break it happens and then the candle close actually went below the kumo so you might think, oh, so this is what we were waiting for, right? This is what we were waiting for patiently for this Sanyaku Gakuten signal come a breakout because the price should continue to go down this way. We might think like that, right, in the, in the first thought. But actually, this is not true. This is not what I mean by patience. Um, from here, it requires patience. So from here, this downtrend, this continuous downtrend is just one of the scenarios. But the fact that the price broke the Kumo downwards and the fact that, that there is a Sanyaku signal here, that means now we are ready to create scenario. And that's what I mean by the sales signal or any signals in the market. So signal is not a timing to buy or sell. Signal is the timing to create scenario. So when the price is in the Kumo, that's not the best timing to create scenario. But when it breaks down, then this is a great timing to create scenario for this downtrend and range and also reverse. Because we don't know which way the price will go to the future. So like I said before, this kind of uh, you know conditional brand thinking is a very important. Like uh, depending on the condition, we have to uh, we have to branch out our thinkings. So, what if question is the key to ask yourself. What if the price continue to go down this way? Then what should you do? What if the price continue to consolidate here? Then what should you do, right? And what if the price retrace backwards and go into the kumo? then what should you do, right? So these are actually three scenarios that you want to create every time you look at the market. You cannot be sell biased just because the Kumo break the, you know, just because the price breaks the Kumo downwards. And that's not what uh, even Goichi Hosoda says. Actually, we're here to create scenario and that is the truth and that is the importance of uh, as a pro trader, as a full-time professional trader because we cannot control the market. So in this case, what happened is that the uh, if I um, hop a little bit, little candles to the future, then it consolidates. It continues to consolidate and the price goes up in into the Kumo here. So you might get upset. Okay, so you might get upset by the fact that the price reaches backwards because you thought that, that the price goes down because there is a Kumo breakout and afterwards you think that okay so Kumo breakout doesn't work so let's look for another like a trading signals right you just go for other indicators or lines or signals to look for this holy grail so once again 
um, you know, we need to. So as I as I said in the part one two, we need to look for the reasons of these wins and lo losses or break evens, and these are important. But before that, or actually after that, after that, this scenario creation is also important. So, and you get upset, the price goes up for us because this was not the part of the scenario, right? But if this is a part of a scenario, then you are expecting also that the price will trace backwards. Then you can psychologically prepare for it, and you can deal with it correctly. You can cut loss immediately. Right after the price breaks this resistance line, you can just exit here, and uh, you don't lose anymore, right? You, you loss is going to be minimized in that case because you take this retracement as one of the scenarios. And also, what if the price goes into the range like this? In this case, you just wait for the breakout towards either direction. In this case, you can draw the resistance line and support line. And let's say once you take a sell here, for example, after the Kun break, you take a sell. And if the price does not go anywhere, if the price keeps consolidating like this, then uh, you might think about exit once. Just exit once and wait for the breakout towards either direction. Then you take a buy from here or you take a sell after the price breaks downwards here. So this is one of the scenario after the market consolidates after the comma breakout. And what if the price goes down? afterwards. If the price continues to go downwards, then that means this Kumo breakout worked afterwards. And we can expect at the next pullback, we can place a sell so that uh, we expect the price continue to go down this way on this reverse in the waves. But once again, even if you place a sell here, the price might retrace backwards from here. So always this uh, you know price against you should be included as a part of a scenario every time you take trades, and that's what actually he says. That's what he says. Impatience will not make things happen, but patience will make things happen. So when we be, when we become impatient to the market, meaning that if we don't create scenario and take trades impatiently. Then uh, you know uh, things things are gonna, things are gonna happen. But if you become patient enough to create scenarios by yourself after we confirm these signals, if you can be patient enough to and take time to create these scenarios, then that will make things happen. And he doesn't say you can win that way. He just says that actually makes things happen. So that means um, that means uh, you know that can actually you know that can reasonably uh, understand these situations for you. So once again, uh, even if the price goes backwards this way, you know what caused this retracement. I mean, this might be the news on Euro or JPY. That it actually spiked up, but um, yeah, before the spike up, you know the reason why it goes up actually. Why the break? Why the breakout happens here? Why this Sanyaku Gakuten signal didn't work? You know that because this was a part of the scenario before you take a sell. So and until we see a decent like a scenario, before take trace, we have to take time, and we have to be patient. So, and that's why I think it's called discipline of uh, taking trace. So once again, we're not here to look for any selling edges or or any uh, trade signals, like a gold cross, dead cross, or breakout. Yeah, these are just signals 
but these are the not the ones to take sell or buy immediately. This is a timing that you want to create scenario and that is very important to keep in mind to be a consistent profitable trader over time. All right. So, yeah, that's it for uh, today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's video and also the past uh, part 1 2 videos. If you haven't watched this part 1 2, uh, please do so that the uh, you can build up this confidence in your psychology over time. I think uh, you know, usually we said that the uh, there are three pillars that are important in trading. One is strategy, one is mindset, and one is money management. Among these three, I think the most important is the uh, psychology, mental mindset, and the second important is the money management. And I think the least important is the strategy. So make sure to have the correct mindset towards the market first and then make sure to have a decent money management skill risk management like a position sizing or lot sizing or a risk management like stop loss or break even strategy make sure to master these first and then you can move on to some strategies to apply okay so yeah that's it for today's video uh, if you liked today's video please press a good button and uh, I will see you tomorrow on the live stream. I will come back to Tokyo and I will see you on the live, live stream tomorrow. So, yep, I hope you have a great day. Um, the number, the case for COVID is still increasing. So uh, I hope uh, you and your family and everybody around you is safe. So please uh, stay healthy and stay gold. I will see you again. Bye for now. またね。